Good morning, my friends. Well, it's the next day. I have to admit, it's Wednesday. And I thought I was going to get the video up last night, but I'm learning to not obsess about something. If I can't do it, I can't do it. But I have to show you what I found at the thrift shop yesterday. Yes, I did hit the thrift shop on senior day, 30% off. And I wish, right? As if. But anyway, I couldn't resist this sign. I love signs. Today, we're trying to talk about prioritizing our daily tasks. I'm talking about those of us that are advancing in years, living uh, independently at home, and trying to do everything. <laughs> And as we know, it just doesn't happen. As you can see, I still have my Easter decor here. I still have but a big box piled high of winter things that I'm going to take out to the shed to hang up in the wardrobes or to put away in tubs. I have my Easter hats and all my straw hats that I pulled out from the closet on the sofa, which when people come, I take them, put them in on the bed, bring them back and forth, but I can't put them back up on top of the cabinets in the closet room, mainly because I'm not tall enough. So I forgot to ask Mikey when they were visiting over the weekend because he's six six, so he would have been able to do it, but maybe I'll try and do it on my own. But I have all these little things, Moosey, uh, as his, part of his, his, um, therapy did do dishes yesterday. So that helped. As you know, I don't have a dishwasher. So I'm trying to get things done. The biggest thing that I did yesterday was prioritize. I made a list of the, the now things that had to be done, especially before we leave, which is in May. And I came up with the fact that number one, I needed a suitcase, which by the way, I did find, so I can check that off my list yesterday at the thrift shop, practically brand new, great price, 30% off as well. So, so I did get that. I did manage to get my food shopping done. I did get out into the garden and did a little more of my cat scat mat cutting because I realized I'm not winning the game on keeping Shamu out of my new little mini row. I have to go out and feed the cats and I might stay out there. Okay, I'm on my way. I'll meet you outside. Now this is what I'm attempting to do. I have this little area of the rock garden that Matthew started planting some ice plants. It's just a little small. Most of the hillside is is filled up with a lot of uh, rosemary and things. But this little area, we decided to make flowers. And the cat keeps coming over here. We've planted impatience, lobelia, and some beautiful little ice plants Matthew planted. He put dirt in here. It, it is at the bottom of a, a sort of a vertical wall. I can't figure out what to put there. It bothers me. We might have to put some maybe fake flowers or something up there. I bought these mats that you cut up into small pieces. They're called cat scat, and they have little plastic spikes, and you cut them up and put them in between the plants because Shamu and Ghost have decided this is where they want to do their business, and they keep digging holes and digging up the plants. This morning it was fine. I thought I had achieved victory, and look what Shamu did this morning came down here, dug, I don't know where the piece of cat scat is, whether she put it somewhere out of mind, but she dug a hole, she found a place. So I'm gonna have to begin again and cut some more. I did plant a, a rose bush that I got on sale for $6. It's one of those bare roots. And I did a lot of soaking the roots first and a lot of uh, pre-planting stuff got that done. So now the reason that the Easter decor is still sitting up there, the uh, pile of things that have to be put away is still here, is because they're down on my priority list. I am pleased that I have accomplished three things. I did feed the cats, 
I did feed the birds. I fed moose. I have put some more scat mats in the garden, so I've rescued that again. I did get the suitcase, and I did the food shopping. The one thing I forgot to get was the big 20-pound bag of cat food that I have to run out and get today, but, but that's okay. So tell me what you do when you have things that are piling up, not only in your mind, but, and, and you know, fortunately, I'm the type that um, I don't get overexcited about things that I can't do because over the years, that's sort of been my life. The stuff piles up. And I'm going to tell you a funny rabbit hole story that happened years ago when all our six kids were young. And something funny that happened, talk about trying to do it all. And if I wasn't able to do it, I would fake it. And I'm going to tell you how I did that. Just a story for some entertainment and break up the, the tough business. So back in the day when we had six kids in our big family, I call it my Courier and Ives home, up in the hills where we had horses and ponies and rabbits and dogs and cats and six kids and we were enjoying life to no end. I was busy. I was either teaching in between having babies or I became a real estate broker. I sold that for several years and was successful at that. I then decided that I wanted to have a shop, so I started a business called Romancing the Home and a national catalog. I even did my own catalog with photos and descriptions and had the kids sending out the bulk mail, and we were busy in those days. <clears throat> but one weekend, uh, we had just a fun family weekend. We did a lot of cooking. My daughters at that point, W was a teenager, W and Margie were both teenagers. I think Mikey and, and uh, Colleen were toddlers and, and the boys were teenagers too. And <clears throat> we had a fun weekend. I don't know what we were doing, but we did a lot of cooking. I think we made pasta. Um, <clears throat> the boys helped Moosey do a big... Sunday breakfast where we did eggs and hash browns and that was kind of the rule on Sunday mornings and the pots were just building up to no end we had a great big kitchen and um just pots were all over the place and the kids I think the dishwasher might have been broken but the kids did help out with work I I did have help too I might add I was very fortunate to have the help and Debbie always said I was a much of a, a mother that was so much more fun when somebody else was mopping the kitchen floor. <laughs> but all of a sudden, Sunday, we thought we were going to have a relaxing day. And we just didn't bother doing all the dishes. I don't know whose turn it was, but I, we weren't worrying about it. We were enjoying ourselves as a family. I think we were playing football in the backyard and a few other things. So we got a call that a family was going to come over and visit us. One of our great friends, fairly close by, but they were gonna stop by. And I said, oh great, that'd be fun. So we had like an hour before they were coming and we all looked at each other. And of course the kids all knew what I was thinking. It was, oh gee, what are we gonna do about this awful kitchen? The beds aren't made, this isn't done, there's, stuff from the kids, bankies and things on the sofas. So they all got into mom mode and they knew the drill because we'd done this before. This was the um, make it or fake it routine. So I'm talking maybe five, six, seven big pots and frying pans and things. I knew I didn't have time to wash them. Couldn't put them in a dishwasher. So I know some of you will be shocked, but it's me. And, and I had no choice. I had to do something very creative. So we started putting pots in the oven, couldn't get them all in. And outside the kitchen door in the, on the back patio, Moose had um, left a, a wheelbarrow or somebody had. Dubby took some pots and took them out the door, put them all in the wheelbarrow, dishes and everything. Matt ran around wiping cabinets off and all of a sudden the kitchen looked fabulous. Then somebody went around, started pulling covers up on beds and things. 
the kids, the toddlers' toys and the bankies, the little blankets and things were picked up. And within one hour, we had a lovely, a lovely looking home ready to greet our friends. I also would turn the lights down to soft so that you wouldn't see anything, maybe dust or whatever around. Now, am I embarrassed about that? No, I think that was a very creative situation where I had no other choice. Certainly better than having friends look at all sorts of stuff around the house. But that was my, what Moose used to call, if she didn't make it, she'd fake it. That was my routine. Sometimes I had to go into that mode. I don't have the energy to do that now, but things, when they build up, at least we don't have visitors popping in too awfully often like that. But this, these tasks, the hats do have to be put away because we have such a tiny little uh, adobe cottage now that I really can't afford to have a lot of extras around. As you know, I am a maximalist. I do have my favorite little things around more than I really need to make me happy. But once again, it's it's a storage problem. <laughs> By the way, <laughs> also at this time, Moose told me in the bedroom, took me into the bedroom, he said, what are you doing? You're teaching your daughters and your boys some very bad habits. And I said, no, I'm not. I'm teaching them how to be creative and to get things done when in a crunch. And to this day, I have to tell you, you ask the kids about that day when we started stuffing pots into the ovens and out in a wheelbarrow, and they will laugh and think that was one of the most fun things we ever did. By the way, they thought it was real fun. And Moose took a picture of the wheelbarrow outside with all the pots and pans in it, or somebody did. And somewhere is that picture. By the way, all the kids are going through the tubs right now that they pulled out of the shed on dumpster day. And each child has a tub that they're going through. All the old pictures back in the day. These are the ones that aren't on our cameras. We didn't have that then. And they're making piles for each child to have. They're switching and they're having more fun with these old photos. But anyway, that is just a, a fun rabbit hole story that I would tell you. I know some of you are going to be shocked, but mm, that's part of me. <laughs> So I guess my thoughts on prioritizing your daily chores or tasks is that you probably have to put a, a value on each task and, and kind of line them up in your mind and say, okay, what task, if I do this particular one, might help to might help our lives in some way better than if we just leave some of the other tasks. And I kind of did that with the four or five tasks of the moment. Now, I still have those other ones I've talked about in the back of my head. You know, the closet that I do a little bit maybe every other day, and it's the closet that never gets totally organized. It's been going on for a couple of years now. But I do make progress little bits every once in a while but never get that total closet clean perfectly. I don't know my, thank heavens that I don't go into a tailspin when I think of all this. Now I do get help. I have to tell you, sometimes people will say, why don't you get your children to help? You know that our children help us immensely. They have their own lives and I don't want to burden them with task like this. When you are trying to prioritize or organize your jobs, you you have to be the one that knows where it goes, what has to go, what stays, where you're going to put it. And there's not that many places in our little place here or in the shed where things can go. I'm not going to worry about it. Whoever wants what they want from all of this. Meanwhile, I'm enjoying most of this, a lot of it I know is too much and I wish maybe half of it was somewhere else right now. So so that is one of those jobs like the closet and the patio and the shed and various other things, but I can't worry about that now. But of my present daily chores, 
I have attached values to what I am trying to prioritize and I'm making headway. Already this week, I've gotten two or three things done that I had to. Now I have to start packing that suitcase and have it ready for Bill. Probably next week, we're going to see Billy and Bonnie. They're coming down for uh, appointments of some sort. And they're going to take one of my suitcases up in the car. And that one's going to be packed. Now, we don't have to pack fancy stuff up there. We won't be, be doing anything that we'll be dressing up. But weather-wise, you know, you have to think, is it going to be cold? I remember in May when we were up there a couple of years ago, I, a lot of times I was wearing a vest, so and it was sometimes a little rainy. I don't think it got too hot, so but we did a lot of outside fun stuff too. So I'm not dressing up, and I'm definitely trying to keep it minimal. I think I might have mentioned that I found shoes on Amazon that are the most comfortable things that I've ever worn. I think as you get older finding a shoe that suits your foot at this point is very, very difficult. And I run around a lot in my clogs, which means my feet have kind of spread and they're so comfortable. My little piggies in there moving around inside my clogs. They've gotten used to being not, not scrunched up. So when I try and put on a lot of the shoes that I have with pointy toes or whatever, those piggies don't like those shoes. So I have to find something that I can get out and walk around in for several hours or just spend, besides my slippers. See, when you are of an advanced age, you spend a lot of time, maybe dressed up in the daytime, fairly dressed, but always have the slippers on your feet. And that's me. So I have found a pair of shoes. They were reasonable. I ordered a second pair in another color. First of all, look at these soles. It's like walking on clouds. Do you see them? Now, they're also very lovely. Now, the other thing I want you to notice is the beautiful leather. This is real leather, my friends. Look at how pliable it is. I have discovered by trying different shoes on that the only shoes that are comfortable anymore are soft, soft leather, not the stiff leather. And these are definitely that. Even inside, when you push on the soles, they're, they're spongy and wonderful. Now, besides all that, when I put my feet in here, now these are not pointy. And as you can see, the toes do have a bit of room, but they're classy looking. They have this little gold thing on the side, beautiful stitching here. And in the back, they have a soft back. So if you wanted to walk this way on them, you can do that too. I got them in this beautiful kind of a beige color, sort of an eggshell color. And I did also get them in a navy blue. Those just came yesterday. Same shoe, beautiful leather. And I think I paid $26.99 for these shoes. I tried to get them in black, uh, but they're out of the black. They have about five or six colors, a beautiful uh, wine colored shoe, a beautiful coffee brown, just great color. They even have an orange or something and a white. So if you are looking for these shoes, I'm going to put all the information in the description box down below. I don't know whether it's over here or wherever and tell you how you order these on Amazon. I'll give you the brand name and uh, they come within several days. So, wonderful shoe. I have to get packing <laughs> on uh, one of my, I'm um, pri prioritizing today. You know, the Easter thing can stay for another couple days because it is during the liturgical Easter season uh, for a while anyway, that lasts for a while. But I am going to start trying to get some clothes together now to get the suitcase on the sofa, the hats away. Maybe that'll happen today. And I'm I'm pleased with the progress. Little by little is the only way to tackle things at this point. Prioritizing, putting values on some of the tasks. Let me know how you do it. I I I know a lot of you are are um, not like me. I. I'm okay with the way things go. So I hope you enjoy your rest of the week. Thank you for all your, your comments. And I love them, the funny ones, the sincere ones. I love them all. 
Thank you so much for loving us and being here all the time. Bye for now, and God bless us all.